Casey channel and welcome back to another video. This video is actually going to be a special three-part series that I am doing and it is called the Habakkuk special. And so basically I am going to be going over the book of Habakkuk since it's only three chapters and I was going to explain each chapter to you guys and summarize it basically and if you want to go back and read it you can because I'm not going to read every verse because um that's going to take up time and I want to keep it short and simple, you know, summarize. So you can follow with me if you want in your Bible. I will point out certain verses, but I won't be reading the whole thing. So let's get to it. Okay, so in our first chapter of Habakkuk, we have Habakkuk's first complaint, the Lord's answer, and then Habakkuk's second complaint. And then it goes into chapter two and chapter three. So basically, let's get some background information. Habakkuk is a minor prophet, which means he's a messenger of God. So he can warn of bad things that may be coming like judgment or he can tell of good things like blessings that will flow on over God's people. It just depends on where they are in that moment, you know. So the setting is Judah. And so what has just happened to Judah is the King Josiah has died. So all the people are reverting back to their evil ways. So in the first four chapters, we notice Habakkuk is talking to God and he's complaining and he's wondering why God doesn't hear him. See, God sees all this evil that's happening. He sees all the violence and injustice that's happening. And Habakkuk's wondering why he isn't doing anything. So Habakkuk feels that as the people are doing violence and injustice, that that should be brought back on them. So, you know, what you do is what you're going to get back thrown at you. So that's just how Habakkuk feels. And he's just wondering why God is waiting to bestow out this punishment to them, which they need in order to get back to where they were because they just reverted back to their evil ways and they need to get back to so, God. Sometimes in our lives, we may look out and wonder how some people get away with their evil doing. Like for example, the Rittenhouse trial was a huge controversy and it still is because it goes under the Black Lives Matter and there's so much that's happened with that. But I'm not gonna get into all that. I just wanna say a lot of citizens, including myself, don't understand why the defendant was able to walk free after the violence and injustice he had done himself. We just feel it isn't right for him to continue his life in freedom while he's short in other people's lives. But the thing is, we don't know God's plan. We don't know what he's doing in our lives. He doesn't always tell us what he's doing because we're not always going to understand or comprehend it or even believe him sometimes. And we just have to be patient on him and know that he is working in our lives and know that the people who are doing wrong, they will get their judgment. They will get their punishment. And so that's how we can relate to Habakkuk in this situation. So in the second section of this chapter, we see the Lord's answer. So after Habakkuk is finished complaining, you know, for now, because he has his second one, the Lord answers him. And so he responds by saying, I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told to you. So that is how we can already tell that God is all knowing. So just like how in the rent house case, we don't understand how he got away with this. And even if God told us, we still wouldn't even believe his plan for us because we don't see it happening right in front of us. But he knows that even though he is telling Habakkuk the truth, he will not believe or understand it right now. But he's still going to bless his people. He's still going to work a work that they will still be shocked even if they are told. So then the Lord goes on to talk about the agent of their judgment. And so the agent, this is leading into Habakkuk's second complaint because the Lord decides to use a more wicked group to take out his people. Well, not to take out, but to judge his people. So he calls on the Babylonians or the Chaldeans. And so this is a very wicked group. Um, the Lord goes into the detail of how powerful and bitter they are. He talks about how they are terrible and dreadful, a law to themselves. Their horses are swifter than the lepers. They're more fierce than the evening wolves. They only come with the intent of violence and they scoff and mock kings and rulers. They bas they're basically like very terrifying. And so, of course, Habakkuk's going to be very confused when he hears this. And so... He goes on to say that their own strength is their God. So they're basically planting the seeds of their own destruction because there's only one true God and that is the Lord himself. So they don't have a God of themselves. So this group thinks very highly of themselves, clearly. So it does not sound very good for Judah right now. But if I was Habakkuk, I would continue to 
try to understand this because even though God is telling him what's about to happen, I know he's not, I know he's not understanding it. He's not believing what he's about to hear because it's crazy. This terrible, terrible group, as you've heard from their description, they're more wicked than Judah and Judah's God's people as well. So Habakkuk, I know he's just confused. So this leads into his second complaint. So in Habakkuk's second complaint, he wonders why God is bringing this group to be the agent of judgment. Habakkuk is all for Judah getting their judgment. He's the one who questioned God in the beginning of all of this. He wants Judah to get their judgment so they can get back right in line with God. But he doesn't understand why God is bringing this group. And so he's confused because he knows God's character and know that God is of pure eyes and to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. So he's questioning God and asking why he's allowing this. Once again, why is he allowing evil to reign? It feels like it feels like that to the back. Why is he letting evil triumph over and over? And so God is allowing this because they are Judah's judgment and the sowers of their own seed, which means they will cause their own destruction, which we will get into later. So, once again, Habakkuk is asking God why he is silent and letting this happen over and over again. So, at the end of the day, Habakkuk just wants to know how God, how long God is going to let this keep happening. At the end of this chapter, he's heard all that God has to say for now. Because, you know, God has always has something to say. And so, at the end, he's just frustrated and confused about what God is doing. And that can that can be for us right now. Like in this time of COVID, we are very confused what God is doing right now. We see all the sickness that is spreading, the deaths, the hospitalizations, everything feels like it's out of control. But it may be out of our control, but it's never out of God's control. He's allowing this to happen. This is a part of his timeline and this is the appointed time that we're in right now. And we are going to get out of it out of it because the Lord says trouble doesn't last always. But we may be confused right now, but we are going to be blessed in the future and we will see a breakthrough. I know it's hard right now. Shoot, It's hard for all of us. We have to go back to school next week and I want to go back in person, but I know the dangers. I don't want to get the sickness again because I had it before and I don't want to get it again. I didn't have it as bad because I'm vaccinated and I am going to get my booster on my birthday when I turn 16. But we just have to trust in God and our family trust in God. We are Christians. We have a firm foundation. We know we trust him and that he is working a work in all of our lives. And when we see it, it's just going to be like, wow, he has brought us all this way and we are going to see an amazing breakthrough. And it's just going to be amazing. So I know that we can all relate to back again this time. And this is why I wanted to talk about this book, because it can be used for us right now, what we're going through. And so every situation, every trial we go through, we may not understand why we're going through it. It may not even be because we're doing something bad, but because God may want to test us or he just wants to see how strong we are. Or, yeah, we do need to get our judgment and get back right. Because we're humans. We're going to make mistakes and we're going to need to get back right. So, everybody, I hope you have enjoyed this first look in the chapter one of Habakkuk, our book that we are going to be studying for this three-part series. And I hope that you can go back and read in your Bibles. I know KJV may not be the easiest to understand. That's why I have a study Bible where it may be in KJV, but at the bottom of the book it explains each verse and it goes through like what each section may mean and it breaks it down for you to make it more simpler and this is where i got a lot of my information and also um getting the bible app can help as well because it has so many different translations it has the niv which i like to use nlt the amplified version and it still has kjv as well if you can understand that i'm trying to get better at understanding that but you can always find God and he is looking for all of us and he wants us to come to him. So I just hope that you have learned something new from this chapter, from this book. And in my next two videos, I will, t I will continue to talk about it. I will go on to chapter two 
in the next one. So if you have any questions, um, my Instagram is at the end. And I'm sure I have a lot of y'all's numbers anyway. So that is it for this video. So I hope you have enjoyed it. And bye, guys. Go watch my outro. Thank <laughs> you.